I, I don't think Orton is going anywhere. The fact is, though, this leads into a different story here. There are clearly a lot of very frustrated wrestlers under contract right now to WWE. We know about the revival. We've heard the stories about Mike and Maria, even though Maria denied for her. She didn't deny it for her husband. She denied for her. But we've heard Mike and Maria Kanellis also at one point asked for their release and they were denied. Uh, some of the members of Sanity. Remember them? Yeah, they're still part of the SmackDown roster. Some of the members of Sanity have been on social media posting very frustrating tweets about, you know, them not being used. I don't know what's going on with Killian Dane. I saw him complaining on social media that Eric Young and Alexander Wolf were used. There was a live event where they were being used and he was sitting at home and he couldn't understand why. Why are my teammates on the road? Why is my wife? His wife is uh, Nikki Cross. Or soon-to-be wife. I don't know if they... Did they get engaged or married? I think they got engaged. I, I don't know. But anyway. My wife, Nikki Cross, she's on the road. My partners, they're on the road. Why am I at home? He couldn't understand why. Tyler Breeze. Just yesterday, Tyler Breeze tweeted, One time I wrestled Jushin Thunder Liger in his only WWE match. What the hell happened? And then when somebody pointed out that... Breeze bought a uh, Lamborghini and showed it off on Instagram, apparently. Uh, Breeze was very quick to point out, oh, I'm still rich, don't get me wrong. But there's still gas left in the tank. Ty Dillinger. I know these are lower card guys in a lot of cases, but still, Ty Dillinger is another one. When was the last time you saw him on TV? Now, you haven't heard a lot about him in recent weeks because he's been recovering from an injury, but even before he got hurt, when was the last time you saw Ty Dillinger doing anything of any, uh, any great note on SmackDown television? There's one match I can vaguely remember a few months ago against Nakamura, but not a whole lot. He's not been doing a whole lot. And somebody asked him, he wins, by the way, for Sad Tweet. I'm giving Sad Tweet this week to Ty Dillinger. Uh, somebody asked him, would you go back to NXT if it would be possible? And Dillinger responded with one word, tried. Tried. There's your sad tweet for the week. Shelton Benjamin, who's been used so little, I legit keep forgetting that he is employed by WWE. <laughs> it's, I still, I can't help but think of that story. I've told this story before, the, the whole, Kurt Hawkins tells the story about the uh, talent meeting many years ago. This is after Shelton left the company. And uh, the Tarver, I just talked about this, but I always laugh when I think of Vince McMahon doing this uh, all-talent meeting backstage and Michael Tarver is asking him a, <laughs> asking him a question. Uh, and Vince just responds, that's a great point, Shelton. That's a great question, Shelton. Even Vince didn't realize that Shelton Benjamin no longer worked for his company. I keep forgetting that he does. That's how little he's been used. He posted a GIF on his Twitter of a car spinning its wheels with the caption, current WWE status. Scott Hall posted a response to him saying, cash the checks, young man. Be, be happy you work for WWE. Just cash the checks. That's all it's about. Just cash the checks. Actually, you know, Shelton's 43 years old. Doesn't look like it, but Shelton Benjamin is 43 years old. He's no young man anymore. Not by uh, WWE standards. Well, actually, you know what? I take that back. Actually, by WWE standards, you got Kurt Angle wrestling on Raw Monday night. You got Jeff Jarrett back on TV with the Road Dog. Yeah, you know what? He is a young man. By those standards, he is a young man. I take that back. But he's clearly frustrated. Hideo Itami asked for and seemingly was granted his release already due to creative frustrations. What a shock. And then there's Rusev and Lana. Rusev was a guest on Lillian Garcia's Chasing Glory podcast and talked about winning the United States Championship recently. This is what he said. He said, it meant a lot. It always does because it's the first championship I ever won. It kind of hurts me. And he's talking about losing the title a few weeks ago. It kind of hurts me because nobody cares about it. It feels like I'm the only one who cares about that title and I want to make it bigger. I wanted to make it uh, I wanted to make it what it was when I wrestled John Cena for it. But it seems like every time somebody else has it, nothing happens. Now that I've lost it, I know the title is probably going to get lost again. And I'm going to get lost again probably too. 
I do want to look my best because I want to be WWE champion. I want to be on top. I don't want to be forgotten. But that's what irks me. What irks me is that I do all of these things. Because he was talking about how he really worked to drop weight and, and all these things to make himself look better. He says, I do all of these things, but nothing changes. And that's where the frustration comes. I'm trying to catch Vince's eye with this or that. We go, we pitch, we talk. It just never comes to anything. It was last year around WrestleMania. And before that, when Rusev Day started and everything. And I thought it was my time. And I keep pushing for it to be my time, and I talk to everybody, but nobody wants to do anything. I don't know what is holding me back, to be honest. I really, really don't. This poor bastard. I just picture him out on the ledge about to jump. I'm trying to talk him into coming back inside. But the frustration is real. The fact is, they built this guy up for the purposes, if we're being perfectly honest here, when they built up Rusev all those years ago, and we're going on, what, four years now, probably... The only reason they built him up in the first place was for the purposes of jobbing him out to John Cena at WrestleMania. That was their only real plan for him. We'll keep him undefeated. We'll put the U.S. title on him. Oh, this is great. The guy rode a fucking tank out to the ring at WrestleMania. They can never take that away from him, but why do you think they did that? So he could lose to John Cena. And after that, is it any wonder that there just didn't seem to be any kind of backup plan or fallback plan or any other plans even six months or a year later. The whole Rusev Day thing was dumb luck. The company didn't plan that. It took them a while to even embrace it. Through dumb luck, they fell into this wave of popularity last year, or the year before, with Rusev. But that was his only purpose initially when he came up. And when that happened, when he lost to Cena, that was it. We, the story arc is over. We got what we wanted. He was done after that. He's not done much of anything since, aside from the Rusev Day stuff. But there's other problems here, too, when it comes to Rusev. And I want to just focus on him for a bit here, because he is a talented guy. He can be contributing in, in a bigger way than he is now. There's problems here, though. For one, he's foreign. He wasn't born in this country. And we all know what, and I don't give a shit, but we all know what Vince McMahon thinks of you if you're foreign, right? Just go back and watch the Stone Cold podcast that he did with Steve Austin and his comments about Cesaro. Another one who has all the tools to be champion one day. If they really wanted to put their effort behind him, got two world titles for Cry, or oh, I'm sorry, universal title. You got two top titles on two different brands. And you have a guy like Cesaro who's just a perennial tag team wrestler. Not because he can't be a single star, because they don't see him that way. And why don't they see him that way? Because you've got this guy in Vince McMahon who goes on this podcast and says, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't think he's connecting with the audience. He's foreign. So I guess he doesn't have the tools to be the WWE champion one day. Because he's foreign. I guess he can't connect with the audience. You look at the list of WWE champions that we've had over the years, and I know a lot of you are probably going to be screaming at your, your phone or computer or whatever after this saying, yes, and how about the lack of African-American WWE champions too? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you absolutely are right about that too. But you look at the list of champions in the last eight or nine years. I believe Alberto Del Rio, who was born in Mexico, and Sheamus who was born in Ireland, were the only foreign-born men to hold the WWE title. They all speak English. You can understand them just fine. Language is not an issue for Rusev. He's got an accent, but so what? But if you don't think that doesn't play into their thinking, the whole foreign thing, if you think I'm joking, or you think, oh, you're reaching, if you think, if you think that's the case, you haven't been paying very close attention. You must be new here. So that's number one. Number two, they have too many people under contract and they don't know what to do with all of them. And three, half the time, they simply don't know how best to use the people that they have, period. Half the time, they just don't know what to do. Rusev says, I want to be WWE champion. Well, get in line. So does everybody else. He's not the only one. Everybody wants to be the champion. But you can't deny that the guy has the tools. 
to be the champion if they ever wanted to give him the ball. They had the chance last year. There was a match. What was that July pay-per-view? Uh, there was a, a pay-per-view match. It was a main event, but it was AJ Styles against Rusev for the WWE title. If ever they were going to give Rusev even just a month, put the title on him and let's just see how he does. I feel like that was his opportunity. And it didn't happen, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. But that was as close as I think he really came to, if they really wanted to, put the title on him and just, as a heel or a babyface or whatever, let him run with it and see see how he does. He doesn't have a lot of you know fancy matches on his resume like Daniel Bryan or like AJ Styles, but he can work, he can talk, he can be very entertaining on the microphone. I don't mean doing the old Rusev crush, machka, like evil heel foreigner stuff. But just being his actual self, he's a very entertaining, very charismatic guy. And physically, like he said in the interview, he's in the best shape of his life. But you can understand his frustration. He just doesn't know what else he can do. He's a guy who simply is not a priority to them. They see him as a mid-card, mid-card for life. And the reality is, I don't know when his deal is up. But he's a guy who I could absolutely going see going somewhere else to prove something to people. He strikes me as somebody who would leave. He would have this probably this 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 feeling in the pit of his stomach. I got to prove something to Vince McMahon. I got to show him what he missed out on. Take like Drew McIntyre. Take whatever rage and frustration you have and throw it back in their face and say, I'm going to show them. They're going to be begging to have me back. And... In a few years, he'll be the guy who goes back to WWE, a bigger star than he was when he left. I could see that in Rusev. Drew McIntyre did that. Alberto Del Rio did it when he left and came back. He deserves better. That doesn't mean he has to be WWE champion, but he definitely deserves better than the hand that he's being dealt right now. They have a lot of competition for that top spot. Not everybody can be the champion. But they could surely be doing more with him. And he may be the beneficiary of this superstar shakeup that they're doing in April. 